when two guys pull together, it's teamwork. In foul or sunny weather, it's teamwork. What does it take to make any business climb? You find it takes teamwork every time. Although we hold each other in low esteem, we find it takes teamwork. Hey, I'm loaded with teamwork. What's life without teamwork? There's no teamwork. to bring the meeting of Top Toastmasters to order. Thank you so much for coming to our special event tonight. If anyone is not here for Top Toastmasters, it doesn't make any difference, just stay anyway. You're going to love it. Plus, we have food and snacks in the back. Let me go through our agenda for you so that you will understand what we're going to be doing. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to ask the members of TOP to get up and introduce themselves so that you may feel free during the break to talk to them about the club, find out more about us. We are going to have our four presenters, which if you all have an agenda, you can see what their topics are. This is all about planning a big event for your club and to get lots of visitors to come and I know we've all been there right you get people to bring food and you make flyers and two people show up and you have a lot of food to eat and take home this time you're going to learn how to get lots of people to attend and maybe some of them would like to join your club which is always a wonderful thing then at, at the end of the presentations, and I would like to remind you to please take some notes. If you only have an agenda, the back of your agenda is blank. If you picked up an information packet, that last page is blank on the other side, those two pages, so you can feel free to take notes. And what we're going to do after our break is we're going to have a question and answer session. So we won't have to interrupt the speakers or the flow of the meeting by asking questions then. If you could hold those questions until after the break, that would be wonderful. And then, <laughs> all right. And with that, let the festivities begin. As I said, I'd like the members of TOP to stand up and introduce themselves. I am Virginia Bosserman. I'm the treasurer. Should you want to join tonight, I would be happy to take your money. Joanne? My name is Joanne Pally, and I am the vice president of membership. I'm the one that's been asking, please everybody wear a name tag, because we all don't know one another's names. And uh, I'll be speaking, and I'm so glad to see so many people here. It's great. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Roger Matthews, and I've been in top for about five years, and uh, looking forward to presenting tonight on you know, marketing. And Roger is also the past president. Of he Post is. He's our past president. Yes. Good evening. I'm Valerie Fusant, and I am the current vice president of education. I've been a member of top. A long, a long time. 2010. Since 2010. And Pathways. And I'm the uh, Chief Ambassador for Pathways. That's right. Hi, I'm Jane Barrett. I am the Secretary of the Toastmasters on Purpose Club this year. I was Vice President of Education last year and was a Pathways Ambassador underneath um, Valerie. Thanks for coming tonight. Okay. My name's Tim Bolger. I'm a member of TOP. I've been a member since 2010. I'm also a member of Fox Valley Toastmasters. Great, thank you. Thank you. And he's also our videographer. Hey. 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 Steve. Um, 
I'm Steve Mustaine. I've been a member of TOP for about five years, and I'm the VP of myself. There you go. <laughs> Brian Shields. I've been a member of TOP since about January. Uh, I'm the Area 4 Area Director, and I'm also a member of Peak Speak, which meets in Libertyville. Oh. Anne? Anne? Mary? Anne? In the area? Mary? Oh, I said that. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. Mary? Hi, everyone. I'm Mary Matron. Hi, Tina. Um, I've been a member of this club for, I guess, since October or so, November. Um, I'm also a member of one other club at work. I'm the VPE over there, and here I'm just a regular member. But what, what's the name of your club at work? Yeah. Okay. Good evening, everybody. I am Anna Kelsing, and I've been a member of DOLP since for about three months already. Okay. President of the uh, the Lake Standing Speaker Toastmaster Club. Uh, I learned a lot from those senior members here. So, great club. My name is Jerry Evans. I'm one of the founding members of Toastmasters on Purpose. I've been a member of TOP since June of 2010 because 2020 TOP will celebrate our 10th anniversary. Woohoo! Before we go any further, if you have one of these lovely devices, if you would make sure that it is either turned off or on silent. And we don't want that to show up in our recording. Thank you. Our first presenter tonight is Jerry Evans. In this session, Jerry will share how to create, plan, implement and execute an open house, a lunch and learn, speech craft, and any other club event to attract people to attend the event experience. Using the example of baking a pie, so this may make you hungry, I'm sorry, and the recipe and ingredients that go into making a mouth-watering and delicious dessert, P, how to plan, what gets planned, gets scheduled. <clears throat> I, how to implement resources to implement the planned event. E, how to execute, taking action on the plan. P, I, E, everybody likes pie. <laughs> Please help me welcome distinguished Toastmaster Jerry Evans in How to Use Pie to Rock Your Planned Event Experience. How many of you love dessert? In particular, how many of you love pie? How many of you love different kinds of pie? Right? We all have our own favorite flavors. In the next 12 minutes, this is going to be a fast and furious session, all four sessions actually, because we can't cover everything in 12 minutes. They can say that's why we're doing Q&A after the break. So please write down your questions as each one of us present things that come to mind, especially relative to the clubs that you belong to and some of the challenges that you face. So how do you use pie to rock your planned event? And I say experience because it's not just about an event, folks. It's about how do we provide an experience in our clubs? Would everybody agree with that? Yeah. Because an event is an event, but we all want an experience. Like when you go to a rock concert, you have an experience. When you go to any type of venue, you have some sort of experience. So we want to help you create that experience. Doesn't that look delicious? Yes. So there's all kinds of different pie up there. Who likes pecan pie? I love pecan pie because I was born in the South. Southern pecan pie, that is one of my favorites. Peach pie, apple cobbler, Virginia, she loves pumpkin pie. So we all have different 
taste when it comes to pie? No, cherry. Key lime. Cherry, key lime. Key you key name lime. it. Pick your favorite pie, whatever that is. Blueberry, right? So as Virginia said, using pie kind of as an acronym, P stands for plan. We'll talk about plan. I stands for implement, and E is execute. So we're going to use that as a metaphor because you want to create the pie first, right? You have to decide what kind of pie do you want to create? What kind of pie do you want to bake? And Tina, who's sitting in the back, she might have a particular recipe to make that maybe cherry pie or whatever her favorite pie is. And she would need to go out and purchase and buy the ingredients to make that pie, to bake it, right? So we're going to shake and bake tonight and give you a, 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 a recipe how to create an event. How many of you have a challenge with open houses? So look around the room. How about lunch and learn? We'll talk about lunch and learn. Speech craft. <coughs> so there's all kinds of different events that club put on. Top, we put on workshops, we put on seminars, special events, educational sessions. It doesn't really matter what the event is, but the elements and the principles that go into creating that experience there's a formula that we can use to do that. The first thing, though, is you have to decide what kind of experience or what kind of event are you trying to create. If you're trying to create an open house, I'll give you an example. I went to an open house about three weeks ago, and I happened to be the Toastmaster. You know when I found out it was an open house? When I got to the event, and I was the Toastmaster, because they did very little to promote and market the event i.e. the open house. So if the Toastmaster doesn't know it's an open house, <laughs> right? Oh, Jerry, it's an open house. Like, really? Thanks for telling me. So to create the event, the other thing that coincides with that is once you decide what type of event, you know, whether it's an open house, lunch and learn, speech craft, etc., or a workshop, a seminar, it takes a team to achieve it. None of us do this in a silo. It takes all of us, like tonight, four, plus all the people to bring the food, Tim to, to record the session, etc. So the responsibility just doesn't rest with one person, does it? Sometimes we know that happens in a club. You have one or two people that are go-to people that are driving the bus, and we just wind up being passengers on the bus. But you need to be one of the ingredients that go into making the event successful, to help create the event. So whether it's your uh, officers, but getting as many of your members as possible to be involved in the process. Because if Tony, for example, Tony belongs to Northwest Suburban, he's the Vice President of Education, if that, that burden just falls on him, and then the other members, they don't buy into it, they're not involved in the process, then He's going to do a tremendous amount of work and he's going to get stressed out and probably frustrated and everything else. So it really takes a team to achieve it and to create the event. But I want to talk about creating experiences. So if you're doing an open house, what do you want that experience to be for your guest? How many of you have done an open house that you feel that was successful? Tina, what were some of the elements that went into that event being successful to have a successful experience? So we planned for two different audiences so that when they came, we had information that was more geared to the soldiers and information that was more geared to the organs. And we split them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who else raised their hand? Danny. The last one I was at, only well, we having this year too. Uh, what it's just it's a what successful is this is a good vibe. I mean, there's 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 good energy and. There's good food, and uh, sometimes there's good drink, too. <laughs> yeah. never hurts. Not alcoholic, of course. <laughs> if it's on site, then it's usually... But energy. Danny said something that's really key, because the energy that we, as members of the club and whoever is coordinating, Virginia's facilitating this evening, if you don't bring a lot of energy to the event, if it's just kind of down here, how do you think the members, the audience, is going to respond to that? They're going to feed off your energy. So if it's Danny said, if it's just kind of a you know kind of a mellow, low vibe, people you know we play music, we do a lot of different things, we have games, we give away prizes, you know to really get people involved and engaged in. It. So, Tim, Kim, 
Um, also, I think it's important to understand, uh, like this lady mentioned back here, your yeah. audience, but also it's to feed them educational information that they need, mm -hmm. right, to be successful going forward. So they, they take it back to their clubs right. or, you know, just um, other people, you know, in, right. in their business environment, whatever it is, right. you know, they can take it back. Right. But it's exactly. So we want to create an experience for our guests and the people that come to the event. And then plan. So many times Roger and I, because Roger, when he comes in later on, he'll talk about, you know, using a database and using a list to reach out to people that have visited your club, guests, and other members from other Toastmaster clubs. But it goes into the really crux of this is really planning. Because I know most of you have heard the expression, if you fail to plan, you what? Plan to fail. You plan to not succeed, i.e. fail. However, that means not planning the event just two to three weeks in advance. Because I met a gentleman the other night at a, at a Toastmasters meeting. In fact, Rama, who's sitting in the back, we were at Palatine Toastmasters' 49th anniversary, and he said, Jerry, I've got this event coming up in three weeks. And I said, well, have you sent out any flyers? Have you promoted and marketed it? And he said, no. And he said it's a major event for his company. And he's the guy that's coordinating it. I said, you better get fired up and start <laughs> working on some of this stuff pretty darn quick. Our suggestion is, when I go to the next one, planning, is this. This is my recommendation, and I encourage all of you to take this to heart. Minimally plan the event or the experience at least a month in advance. Because, unfortunately, those of us who have been in Toastmasters for any length of time, we have a lot of... You know the P word, Roger. We have a lot of folks that put things off into the last minute. They're better known as procrastinators. They will wait to the 11th hour to register for the events, and a lot of clubs will wait to the 11th hour to plan the event. My suggestion and encouragement would be minimally four weeks, and better yet, six to eight weeks in advance. As Val comes up and she's talking, she's talking about the marketing pieces, the flyers, you know, getting those prepared, all the steps that go into it, and getting more people involved in it early on in the process. Does everybody agree with that? Does that make sense to everyone? Because when you shortchange yourself by using a short timeline, it's just like in a business. If you're going to put pressure on yourself and to the other club members because you're like, well, how many people are coming to the event? And as Val talks about Eventbrite and you know making sure that you have an Eventbrite link on your flyers, and she'll get more into detail about that so that people can actually register for the event. Because that way you can plan, depending on the venue that you're using, if it's your regular club venue, or like our last event when we had Ron Arden, we originally started out with a room that had 70, you know, would hold 74 people, and we had to change rooms that would hold 120, and we actually had 108 people attend. If we hadn't been on top of that, then we would have had to turn a lot of people away. We wouldn't have had you know, seating for them. So plan in advance, at least six to eight weeks, and put it on your club calendars. How many of you go on to b30toastmasters.org site? Okay, look around the room. I encourage all of you to visit d30toastmasters.org because there's a ton of information on there. There's a bunch of resources on there. But two things that I want to encourage you to do. <coughs> this second off is our public relations manager for District 30. We have what we call a club corner, so you can take any club event and you can ask her to post it on the club corner of the District 30 website. Also, she'll post it on the district calendar. So you have it on the district calendar as well as the club corner. And you'll see there's a drop-down menu. You can just click on that and you'll see club corner. And then, you know, under district calendar, you can click on that. You can see all the different events. So for planning purposes, and I would encourage you also, go to other events and see what they're doing. Best practices, benchmark it. Because Tony's club might have a great idea for an event that he's done, and you can borrow from that. Thanks, Kim. So please put it on your calendar plan in advance six to eight weeks. I have samples of this. This is something else that we don't typically do, but I'm going to encourage you, and you can take a look at it online. This is actually, and Danny I know because he's, he's a marketing person, is this is a club, this is a release. This is a press release that you, when you're creating an event, you can use this press release in order to promote and market the event. 
and it is online. You can pull, there's a template for it. You can customize it to your club, the date, the time, etc. And it's just a good vehicle to use to encourage people to, to attend event. And all of this stuff, we're also, we're going to post this on our district website, so if you don't get all this, we'll have links to different things. We'll have the video up, because Tim is recording it, and that will be shared with everybody. The last three things that I want to cover with you, and I have ex examples of this, and Val is going to get into this in more detail. A lot of times when people create the promotional pieces, marketing pieces for the event, they'll do it very generically. And I have examples, I don't have time to pass these around, but I put it, there's three different examples. This is one example of an open house flyer, Val can talk more about that. This is another example. I love this one because I like the idea of Super Toast Man, but it's just a different way, you know, to kind of capture people's attention because it's the hook. Why should they come to your event? What's going to get them exciting? What's the reasons why they should attend Brian's <coughs> club? He's doing an open house or some other special event. You know, you want to hook them with something. And Val, again, will get into flyers and rock when we talk about databases and lists. So that's another example. Lunch and learn. Virginia and I and, and Val and Kim and a number of others of us uh, have done lunches and learns for companies. It's a great way indirectly to introduce Toastmaster to a corporation or to a company. By going in and doing lunch and learn, you gauge interest, the amount of people who've interested in Toastmasters, and then from that point, you can move on to what we, can, we call a demonstration meeting. But it's just a different vehicle to do that, but you can do that with your clubs. So it could be a noontime club like Tony's, meets for an hour, community clubs, you know, they could do it as well and just figure out the timing for it. So lunch and learns are very effective. So leaving with that, I know this was a very quick presentation, but I want you to keep in mind really the PI acronym about planning the event, implementing you know, the resources, find out what resources you need for it, and then there's that proverbial E, which is execute, and I think all of you understand what that is. That's about the action part, because the information you get tonight is we're going to provide you with information, hopefully educate you on some of these things, but it's what you do with the information after you leave here tonight and you actually apply it, implement it, and act on the information. Otherwise, it just becomes you've had a nice time, you've enjoyed our food, but you know you really don't take the information and use it. So now with that said, let me turn it back to our Toastmaster so we get into our second presentation. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jerry. And again, if you have questions, write them down. After the break, you'll be able to ask Jerry. Val is our next presenter, and Valerie Fuson is a multiple DTM. How many do you have? Two. Two. She's a did them. And <laughs> not only that, I remember when I first joined Toastmasters eight years ago, Val back then was talking about marketing and how to use social media to get your club's information out there. So we have asked Val to share that information with you tonight. So Val, its session is going to be on how to promote and market your club events. Let's welcome Val. <laughs> And now that you heard about how to create and plan an event, I'm going to talk to you about promoting it. The biggest thing, again, as Jerry was mentioning, that a lot of times you don't promote it effectively. You don't plan ahead enough. And I know one club I was talking to, they were going to have an open house. They were going to have two people speaking themselves that were creating it and for two months they were thinking about it and the week before they still didn't decide on what they were going to talk about. So how many, I asked, well did you have the event? And they said, yeah, well how many people came? Uh, one, I think it was the area director. So you really have to plan uh, and, and if, if you don't then you shouldn't be upset that you don't have anybody. 
one thing that, that we work with is creating the flyers. Uh, but I want to talk to you first about Toastmasters International. They've got a video now. They've recently, since Pathways started, they've been, again, renewing, getting new information on the website. And one thing that I noticed is that now they're creating uh, flyers because of Pathways. And I was always disappointed because they never really had enough templates. You really had to create your own. And so now they have more. Um, you, you've been on, right, Virginia? Yeah, yeah. So very nice. I came across this little video that talks to you about all the different templates that they have. Because one thing that you need to do is brand Toastmasters with your club. It's, does, it's not effective if you're trying to get people to join your club, have an open house and join your club, and you've got red, white, and blue. Or you've got purple <coughs> and green flyers. You want to brand it for Toastmasters. And branding means the colors and a logo. And you have choices of different logos. So you really can get pretty creative if you want to. And if you don't have time to be really creative, then they do have some templates. They have flyers. Uh, so one thing that there's a manual on how you can create the flyers, what the guidelines are, what the parameters about the colors. They do have a spectrum that shows you the exact number to get to the blue. When, you're, when you have your printer, you go to the advanced section, and then it'll give you a little diagram that says, okay, what shade of blue, what shades do you want? And you can type in the numbers, and it'll give you the exact uh, burgundy, the exact blue, the exact yellow that Toastmasters has. Uh, another thing is that now that they have letterhead, they have uh, the flyers for open houses, and they have pictures already in there. Another thing they came up with is actually graphics of pictures, and they didn't really have a lot of that before. It was, it was very limited. So now it's flyers for networking, flyers for, uh, what are some of the other corporate. ones? Corporate. corporate. So they have people gathering. They have pictures of a speaker speaking to an audience. They have pictures of people sitting at a conference table or just a casual networking. So you really have a choice of what pictures you want to create in your flyer now. And I really thought it was very valuable. And I downloaded, pretty, I like to download, I downloaded all the different pictures for the different sections. So when I create flyers, I can just go right to my computer instead of having to go to Source Masters International. Uh, the stationery, but a lot of marketing uh, designs now. So I want you to go to that, and it's just at Toastmasters.org. You can Google just. Toastmasters uh, templates, and it'll take you right here. So it's real simple to get to. So I want to talk to you about some of the flyers that we create. There's different ways of creating flyers, and we use a lot of, um, we use, sometimes we use different types of headers, and sometimes we'll use on the side, and I'll show you another one, oh, I like on your agenda. We've got the officers list in there. So for agendas, I usually create for an event. It's a different, this is not a, a typical agenda. This is an event agenda. Uh, but this is something that we, we create for our events. And there is a method to it. Instead of saying, hey, we're having an open house. Um, our club is this. You know, we, we've been a, a club for, you know, eight years now, and you talk about the club, and then you talk about who the speaker is, and then you, then you tell them what they're going to learn. Well, that's not really grabbing, it's not using that hook to grab them in. So you want to think, okay, well, you start from the planning, what are we going to talk about? What is a catchy title that when people read it, they'll come, they'll be enticed to read more. So if we just had, come to our open house, 
you're going to say, yeah, I've been to a lot of open houses. Uh, I might have time, I might not have time. But if the title entices you to come and listen to the speakers to get more information, then you're going to go. You might put it in your calendar to go ahead and do it and register. So you want to have the, the pain points, what they're going to get from it. And then you can have the speakers who's speaking, what they're going to speak about, what information they're going to walk away with. And this is just like a speaker's one sheet. So if you look at speakers, Google speakers one sheet, it'll give you the format that also you can use if you're a speaker or you want to be a speaker. Because this is what the corporations are looking for. So the layout is really important. And then we also put down the register, the Eventbrite. So before we even send out the, the flyer, we create the Eventbrite for our event. Then we have the link that you can go to. And uh, when I create the flyer, I will make it an active link so that if you get the flyer in the mail, you can just click on the link and it'll take you right to our Eventbrite page. So you have a lot of different things that are working in place at the same time. Um, and then, in this one, um, you know, we always invite people to bring guests. Because sometimes people won't think about that. Another flyer that we have is the one we had for Ron, the voice coach. Uh, the power of your voice, how to project authority and get the message heard. Is that something that people would want to know about? Instead of come and hear the speaker, he's a speaking, he's a uh, voice coach. But what does it mean to you? <clears throat> I can be a more powerful speaker. Maybe I want to go to that. So it's how you word your flyers. Any documents that you put out is how you word it is really important. And again, we put down what they will learn, what what information they're going to walk away with. So the flyer is self-promoting. You hand it to somebody and it has everything on it. And when we do the flyer, we also invite our members. We send it out to our members in an email with a link so they can either download it or they can <coughs> link it to it. We also link our flyers to our website, our Free Toast Host website. So again, in we'll have the do we have the the website? Well, we, yeah, we have the website on there. So this one is for top. So it takes them directly to our website. And on here, we also because it was a different venue than usual, we also had a map because uh, D, D building was a little harder to get to. So we put a little map in here too. But they can go to the link. We always try to put a link in our flyers so they can go directly to our website and find the actual document <coughs> if, they're, if they want to download it from there. So it, our, it has a lot of information here for, for people to access and invite guests to it. So if you're having a corporate event, your corporate club, you might send out a flyer to the managers in the club, to departments in the club. So you, as a corporation, it's a little bit different than a social club. So you wonder who your audience is. And then when you write, make sure that you're targeting that club, that speaker, um, that audience. The Eventbrite is who, uh, raise your hand if you've done, if you've created Eventbrites. Okay, only a couple of you. The Eventbrite looks like it's really difficult, but it's not. It's pretty easy to use. It does take a few hours to, to get used to it because there's different things that you have to do. Uh, what I do to save time is I create uh, this part here, that the description, I created that in the flyer. I just copy and paste it in the Eventbrite. 
So I'm not redoing it. <coughs> so whatever you can duplicate is it makes your job a lot easier. No typos. Hmm? No typos that way. No, because I've already checked my typos. <laughs> uh, and speaking of typos, when I create a flyer, I send it out to two or three people, check my flyer, and one person will check, find something and the other person won't, and then you know, someone else finds something. So you really have to have a lot of eyeballs on, on your work because you want to send out information that's, that's correct. Because if you have a lot of misspellings in it, then they, I thought this was a professional flyer. <laughs> So you, you have to have your image. Your image is really important when you send information out. So again, because I copy everything, <coughs> again at the bottom of this page, I also have the links again. So if they want to go back to our website, from here they can go back to our website because it's all on the description. This is also <coughs> real important because if when you people register, it takes their names, their emails, and then it counts. So what I do is send out to um, everyone in the planning and development process how many guests we have periodically so we can plan for it if we need a bigger room, like with Ron. That went from you know, 20 people to 108 people. So we had to know that because we had to increase our food, we had to increase to a larger room. Uh, so this is really, uh, really a saver. And Eventbrite it has another way to market your event on Eventbrite. So it's a promotion. And I would suggest you just promote your club for every meeting on Eventbrite. Social media. Again, there's a link from the Eventbrite to Facebook. You want to make sure that every person in your club is posting your event on their Facebook or what is the um, Instagram. Instagram? Instagram. I don't use it, but it's, it's you know some people use it. So always get all the members. It's everyone's responsibility to promote the event. It's not just one person. It's every single member, and they should send out flyers and they should send out promotion post to each of their social media events. So this is something that you really want to look at. I also, uh, we created an event planning checklist and there's one in the back. So you can take one when you leave. We'll also put it on, a, on the website. So you can go to our website and download it. We'll try to put it in Word so you can use it and then just change it for your, for your uh, your club. So, uh, the next speaker is going to be talking about, again, experience. Again, jot down your questions because Val knows all about that social media stuff. She's taught me a lot and she's had to reteach me some of it several times. Our next speaker is Joanne Pallet, and as you know, Joanne is our Vice President of Membership. Joanne is going to speak about the extremely valuable soft skills of the programs and workshops <coughs> that your club may be willing to, or may be planning. Who doesn't like to go to a party? That's the way you have to look at it. And Joanne is going to talk about going to the party. Joanne Pallet. That is absolutely correct. Who doesn't like a great party? I'm pretty sure everybody in here has either thrown one at their own house, or people say, great party, invite me back. And that you, I'm sure everybody's gone to someone's home where they threw a great party, it always has a theme. It can go from as casual as, let's have some beer and hamburgers on the grill, to a birthday party, to a St. Patty's party, to an Easter party, to a divorce party. <laughs> this is all kinds of venues for a party. So we're going to think about events that companies put on that 
organizations put on, that our clubs put on. The same way we would think about having a party in our home. Okay, you've planned it, you had this great idea. Uh, it's in your home, but, but you know, maybe you, you got a little hat for everybody to wear, or something to wear around their neck, or a name tag to wear. And you're having 30 or 40 people come. It's gonna be a great party. Now, what happens in a great party? What do you really need to have in a great party? There's two things you need. Well, people, of course. Mm -hmm. But when people come to a party, you have to be able to let them know that there are two things that they're going to find. Friendliness and safety. Friendliness and safety. And here's how you go about it. Because a party here, this party tonight for us here, works the same way that you've done at home, but you just never thought about it that way. So you've got all the planning, and somebody knocks on the door. First person in. Who greets that person if you've got a party in your house or you go to someone's home? The host. The host, the host and all their family. And if you come late, maybe there's a sign on the door that says, open the door and come on in. And as soon as you walk in, somebody who's already been at the party is going to come over and say, hey, welcome, come on in, even if they don't know you. But you'll know them because they've got a name tag on And they'll say, hey, we've all got name tags here. You could do that at a party in your home if you don't know everybody coming because you have asked for guests. You know somebody great? Why don't you? So here's what happens. Eye contact. Now, if we've been to high school, we've had biology, and you learn that the right side of your brain takes care of the left side of your body, and the left side of your brain takes care of the right side of your body. And so what you want is a, a total communication. And that's what we do when we look at one another. So the other guy, other gal, may not know they're supposed to do this, but what we're supposed to do in the greeting process is to be able to look into the right eye, left eye, right eye, left eye. And just like when I yawn, which I do frequently because I go to bed real early, or I'm looking for this little clicker, is that what happens is, if you do it, the other guy will do it. And what they're going to get from you is whatever friendliness you have available, and whatever safety you have available. Those are the basics to build relationships. The very, very basics. Of course you want to have them to have fun but they're just coming in. So the next thing you're going to do is, so I'm doing this correct, who doesn't like to go to a party, is the handshake. I need someone to help me. Tony, would you come up and help me? Come on, Tony. Yes, he's good. Come on, Tony. OK, here's what the handshake does. Now, we've all heard of Tai Chi. Am I right about that? Tai Chi, yes. uh, 1,500 years ago, some of the Eastern civilizations decided that they figured it out. They get in our bodies, we have this energy system. So I'm telling you, if you're alive, you've got chi. And if you're alive and have chi, you can do a great handshake. So my grandmother always said, don't do this. That's a dead fish handshake. <laughs> the dead fish handshake does not communicate safety or friendliness. What it communicates if, something else. What if you're at a dead fish party? <laughs> and a handshake that is for your party, for people that, that you wish to greet and to come in, is a flat handshake. It isn't this shaking hands, because some people will shake hands just to hang on, and they'll turn their hand over. That's different than a friendly handshake. Power move. That's a power right. move handshake, but that's something different. So, so that. Well, you can certainly use it, but not at a party. Not at a party. So everybody at your party, all your family members, all your club members, need to know how to be able to shake the hand so that the hands transmit the energy you have for friendliness and safety. So we're going to demonstrate that. So I'm, I just definitely wanted a man, because when <coughs> men and women shake hands in this country, sometimes Men don't want to shake the hand of the woman because, I don't know, whatever. It's just a man-woman thing. And sometimes the woman's a little bit hesitant for that. 
but all women in business need to learn how to shake their hands well. So hi, hi Tony, I'm Joanne. Now he's got a pretty good handshake. Here's what happens in a handshake. My energy, because I want him to feel welcome, I want him to feel safe. And so I can do this, but if I did this, that would be good. So I'm not doing that. So what I want is my energy to go through my shoulder, down my arm, into his hand, up his arm, and into his shoulder. And you'll know that happens when it feels really good to have that handshake. It, it's a firm handshake. It isn't pumping water. You can't get any water. Don't pump water. Don't pump water. It's just this kind of firm movement. And I'll see, he's he's kind of moving back. But I want him to, ah, see that? Did you? I went forward you, on that You went forward on that. Did you feel the, the movement? Mm -hmm. So not everybody stand up. Hurry up. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Find somebody. And you can say to yeah. Oh, yeah. And try it out. You know you've done it. Hey, Danny. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh, she's touching over there. Okay. <laughs> what about the fist bump, Joanne? Okay, you can sit down now. <laughs> what about when somebody does this, the fist bump? Oh, the fist bump. Okay, thank you, because that there are some exceptions to this. Okay. There are some exceptions. That, that, that. This is really different. That's just somebody that often young people don't know how to do it, and they, they want to do the water pump thing. But a lot of people have arthritis, not just old folks, but a lot of, I have a very young cousin that's got arthritis, and her hands are like this. She can't really shake hands. She can kind of get her hand apart, but it would hurt her. So people who have arthritis often say, how about a fist pump? Uh, a knuckle pump. And that's really okay. And then there are people that don't like to be touched. So you could say, could I shake your hand? And you could tell by their eyes, because an eyes will, your eyes will show if somebody doesn't want you to get too close. In this country, some of the first physical contacts we have with other people is the handshake. Now there's the other thing called the hugging. <laughs> so in our club, uh, we all know one another, and there are plenty of huggers in our club. There's even people like <laughs> Michelle over there, who's, who's never been to this club before, and we talked so long on the phone about her coming, that when she said, I'm Michelle, it, we just went like this. It was a hug. Uh, that was great. I didn't even shake her hand. We just hugged. And that's okay. So you have to be able to be aware of what you communicate with these two eyes and with your outstretched hand. It's a welcome hand. It demonstrates that you're open for relationship. Now in here, the relationship may be very different than the ones you have at work. <coughs> Who doesn't like to go to a good party? If you think of the fact that you can move your energy into someone else, and they'll meet you halfway. Tony said to me, gee, I, I thought I felt us meet halfway. Yes! That is exactly what chi does. So I do some Tai Chi, so you want to think of it as chi is the energy in the body. And if you're alive, you have it. If you're alive, you have chi, and then you can learn how to do a good handshake. But the Tai comes from movement, from the movement of what you do with the energy in your body. And that movement, go on YouTube and just you know type in martial arts fighting and scroll through some of them because you will see some older art martial arts uh, martial art artists that will simply have somebody come running at them. Virginia comes running at me with a knife and a sword, and she's just going to do me waste. And the guy will go like that, and Virginia will fly across backwards across the room 20 feet. <laughs> And you go, yeah, yes. That man has learned how to move his energy straight through his hand into somebody else to protect himself. 
the monks learned how to do Tai Chi to protect themselves because they didn't have a lot of weapons. So they learned to do it with their bodies. These soft skills are just as important, I think more important, as a matter of fact, than the paperwork stuff that goes in when you walk in to a formal event and you sign in at a sign-in table, or you have a registration table, and you give, uh, you give a, your email address and your phone number and your name, and in the case of top Toastmasters, you give what Toastmaster club you come from. So those things are really important, but everybody in this club, your club, should be doing the handshake and the eye contact with everybody. That lets them know that we're friendly. So we have some guests here tonight that haven't been here before, three of them that I know of. Um, would you be willing to speak up to say if you think that this club is a friendly club and pretty safe? Yes. He says, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We are. And, and we do this all the time. So you'll see us moving around, talking to everybody as best as we can. Everybody loves to go to a good party. And you can do it the same way you would do it in your home. Everybody loves to go to a great party. go to a good party? Oh, yes. Absolutely. And just to add a little bit to that, that's not just when you're having a big event. There's, I know that I have visited Toastmasters clubs where no one has said anything to me. <laughs> and I thought, wow, if I had never been to Toastmasters before, that would not leave a great impression with me. It's not just the vice president of membership's job. It's everybody's job to be warm and welcoming to anybody who happens to show up at your meeting. So that is something we all need to remember. Now Roger is our technical person. Roger knows all about computers and websites. And he says that email marketing can be a big help in growing your club, and it can. If your club is not using it effectively or at all, you're missing an opportunity. At top, we attribute much of our success to our email marketing efforts. I would say, Jerry, help me here, about five years ago was when we kept getting up to 18, 19 members Come on, we gotta get to 20 because we've got educational awards to submit and we wanna get credit. And we were always sort of fighting to get to and to stay at 20. So this is something that you want to really listen to so you can keep your club at 20, that you can keep visitors coming to your club. Roger Matthews is a digital expert on how to do things online. He has designed hundreds of websites and helped businesses design email campaigns for over 20 years. The name of his talk is Three Simple Things for Successful Email Marketing. Please help me welcome Roger Matthews. If you and I were to have lunch, we might be talking about what goes on in our daily lives, but perhaps you might tell me some of your tales of woe about Toastmasters. And you might say something like, oh my gosh, we're having an event coming up and we don't hardly have anybody signed up. Or, Raj, what am I going to do about all the existing members that don't want to sign up for the agenda tomorrow? We've only got 20% of the roles filled. So I would probably tell you that the answer to your problem is email marketing. Now, email marketing means a lot to different people. So let's just take a quick look at 
what is involved with email marketing. Now, it's a process, and the process is that someone gives you their email address and permission to send you things. It's that simple, and that is called an opt-in. Then when you get that email address, you take it and put it in a database, and it creates a list of names. The next thing you do is you're getting ready to send them something of interest. And we all want to get things of interest <coughs> to us, and that is called content. And finally, because we've done them a favor by sending them great content, we can now ask for something in return. And that's called the call to action, the CTA. So at the end of that process, we have developed a group of people called followers. And has anybody ever followed anybody on, online? Of course, most of us have. So that's a place where we want to build our list and build followers for our club and make that work for us. Now, there's three things that I want to tell you about. We alluded to those. They are three simple things. But these things are, three things are so profound you won't believe the implications of these three things. Are you ready? Yes. Ready. Understand why, commit, and apply. Think about those words for a minute. Understand why, commit, and apply. What does that really mean? Tonight when you go home, I want you to say something to your spouse or your dog or your cat or to the wall and say, understand why, commit, and apply. Say that three times to them. And they're going to look at you and they're going to say, you're out of your mind. <laughs> and you just say, well, I'm a Toastmaster. <laughs> so let me break this down for you as to what this really means. When you think about it, this is how you learn virtually anything. You have a why, and you've all heard of a guy by the name of Simon Sinek. He made the word why hugely popular. So there must be a why behind everything that we do, usually. Then we make a commitment. What's, what's life like without commitment? We make a commitment, and then we apply what that idea is. So let's take a closer look at a why. This is called the membership funnel for Toastmasters. And we can use email to help us get people through the three stages of becoming a Toastmaster member. We first want to build curiosity about Toastmasters. And the great thing is, we've all talked to somebody and they've said, oh, I've heard about Toastmasters. What are, we, what are we talking about? What, what goes on there in that group? So curiosity is the first place. And then the second one is enlightenment. People want to know more. And the great thing is we can invite them to a, mem uh, a meeting and they can experience a Toastmaster meeting. And they start to get more knowledgeable about what goes on in Toastmasters. And then the third step is commitment. And they're going to become more comfortable with Toastmaster community. They will naturally say, ah, I think I want to be a member. So this is a process of which we can use email marketing to help us support this process. So commitment. Now commitment is another thing. We find that with commitment we need some tools to help us. 
with our commitment to follow through on email marketing. So when we commit to something, Toastmasters has given us some tools through the Toast Host website, and we can email our members. You've all gotten those type of emails. But that process is really insufficient because we need something more powerful, and that's where having a service to help us manage our mailings comes in really handy. Now, at top, we use a program called MailChimp. <coughs> And MailChimp is a database, and we can design emails through that system. And with the click of a button, boom, goes out to our entire, entire mailing list. And that's a fantastic way because it also ensures and tracks who opens it and who clicks through to the next level of involvement. So MailChimp is one of the things that you should go and set up almost immediately. The first step, though, is what you want to do is go and sign up for a Gmail account for your club. Then when you go and sign up for MailChimp, you just link the two and they become part of the system. And as Val was talking about with Eventbrite, you can also link Eventbrite. To MailChimp. So now we have a more sophisticated system where we can help stay in touch with all of our prospects, with all of our people that we might want to invite to a meeting, to an event. So that's a, a fantastic way to utilize that. And I'm not going to go into how to set up MailChimp, but I can suggest this particular tutorial on YouTube. It's by Daryl Wilson. He'll take you through the steps for beginners. And it's a great way to start to learn how to do MailChimp. Now the final three things, the final third thing is applying it. How do we apply our email marketing? And here's how you can do it at the club level. Each member writes an article of interest. <laughs> now, this is a fantastic way to get your entire club involved with email marketing. Have them write a 600 word, 800 word blog post, article, and make sure that that goes out every month. And just rotate it right around the room to the, to the people. And you can build lists from your sign-in sheets. So if you don't have a list yet, which almost probably very few people do, we created a list and every time somebody came to one of our events, we asked them to sign in and we added them to the uh, MailChimp list. And the final third thing to apply is set a goal of 100 people in six months. Now you might do more than that, you might do less than that, it's not a big deal, but you have to make it a community project to help grow your list. Now if everybody takes their phone out and texts one person and said, would you join our mailing list, just come to our website and sign up, we would all add several people to our mailing list by the end of the night. So this is not a hard process. It seems like it's a big job, but it isn't all that tough. So, finally, understand why, commit, and apply. That's really the way that you can grow your email list. That's a way you can get people involved with your club. That's a way to work through some of the technical details of this. And I challenge all of you to get involved with email marketing. The sooner the better, because you'll get results much faster that way as well. So I'd like to turn the meeting back over to, I believe, Jerry now. Or, back or, to Jen. or Jen. Okay. Very good. So 
again, write down your questions because we're in a few minutes we're going to have a break and then we're going to open it up for question and answers. But before I do that, I'm going to ask Jerry, who was the person who actually helped found the club, to come up and just tell you a little bit more about Toastmasters on Purpose. First of all, I want to recognize Roger just finished, Joanne and Val. Didn't they do a marvelous job? Yes. Did you learn something from that? We put a lot of thought, a lot of energy and effort into doing these things, and it's really important. It's our opportunity as a Toastmasters community, as a club, to pay it forward to all of you. Because we all, most of us belong to multiple clubs, and it's an opportunity for us to give back in terms of what Toastmasters has done for us. Toastmasters was founded back in 2010. Uh, we are a hybrid, unlike most other clubs, because regular clubs, all of you belong to regular clubs, yes, when I say regular clubs, where you have all these different functionary roles, Toastmaster, Evaluator, General Evaluator, you know, Topics Master, etc. Top, we only have four roles in top. You're either the Toastmaster, you're a speaker, Evaluator, or a timer. That's it. Our focus is on speeches and evaluation, so if you want to elevate your speaking skills, if you want to elevate your evaluation skills, that's why you come to TOP. The criteria for joining TOP is very straightforward. Those of you who already have your CC, you can already join TOP. If you haven't been a member of Toastmasters before, or if you haven't quite gotten your CC, or you haven't at least completed level two in Toastmasters, so we don't have to teach you the basics and the fundamentals to where you're, you know, afraid just to get up in front of the room and speak to a group of people, then we ask you to audition. And the audition consists of a four to six minute, all of you familiar with an icebreaker, because we want to assess the skills that you already have, and if we know you have, you know, pretty much basic fundamental presentation skills, speaking skills, you audition, and then we as a group, we vote to accept you as a member of Toastmasters on purpose. Is everybody following with me on that? Yes? We meet the first and third Wednesdays of every month right in this room, X143, and as you see like tonight, from time to time, depending on which quarter it is, which time of the year, we put on different workshops and different seminars of which you all would be part of. We encourage everybody to take on one of those roles because if you're serious, and I do mean if you're serious about taking your speaking skills to another level, your evaluation skills to another mm -hmm. level, then you come to top because if you just are sitting in your other clubs, and I know you have members, you know, all of you know that we're not a sitting and knitting club. We are actually are a speaking organization, communication organization. Here's where you come to do that. The difference, too, in terms of the evaluation process, you get two formal evaluation, which Virginia was talking about earlier, which is content and then delivery and sub points underneath those two. And then our Val's our vice presentation. You would tell her if you want a formal evaluation or in the case tonight, like Michelle has practiced our contest speech, then we would turn it over to the group for a round robin so everybody can contribute something positive to the speaker so that they can work on to improve it. So the first and third Wednesday, this room, X143, we invite you to come back at our next meeting, which will be the first Wednesday in April for a regular meeting. It's a little bit different than tonight, you know, in terms of we're in workshop seminar mode and then Michelle practicing her speech. So you can really see what the general format of the meeting is. And we welcome you to come back and, and observe and be part of that. And Joanne is our Vice President of Membership, so please see her with additional questions and any questions you have during the break. So with that said, it's 8.15 right now, so instead of taking a 20-minute break, let's take a 10-minute 10, 10, 10 break. So please come back at 8.15, get some food, some refreshments. Joanne said, practice shaking hands with all the other folks that are here. And we'll see you back at 8.25. So for about the next, where'd Val go? Val, what's, we're gonna allow six minutes? About six minutes? For the Q&A, yeah. Okay, six minutes of Q&A, so Tim, I mean, Tim. Tim, you can please give us six minutes total? Tim, yeah, Tim, 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 Tim. Tim, Tim. 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 Right. So I know some of you have some burning questions that you want to ask. I do. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So whether it's Roger, whether it's Val, whether it's myself, or it's Joanne, or any of our top members, now would be the good time to do that. 
So please ask away from any one of us, and we'll be glad to field okay, those questions. First question. Ryan, you had? I'm going to ask Jerry uh, about yes. press releases. Mm -hmm. You had a great example of a press release. Yes. Is there a list of who to send it to? Well, going back to Roger, I'll let Roger respond to the mailing as part of it, that we would suggest always to make sure, just because Tony's Club, Northwest Suburban, I know a lot of other the rest of your clubs, you have a sign-in sheet. You start you start developing that list. You can send this out to you can send it out to community papers, local papers. You can send it out to uh, other organizations. You can send it out to the business community because when Val was talking about different flyers, so there's templates for different flyers. You can do an attachment to that because what you're trying to do is just to get people's attention to come to the event. Well, the reason I ask yes. is because um, there, there, it's it's one thing to say there's this this is who you should send it to, mm -hmm. and then another thing to say this is who they are, and this is their email address and so mm -hmm. forth. Because to say who send it to with the community community papers, that, that's a nice generic statement. Okay. But I don't know who the people would okay. be. Okay, here's here's what I would suggest because we, we want to make sure to give other folks time. Is that just like when we talk about building clubs? Instead of making a cold call, I wouldn't call a company cold. Mm -hmm. I would work my network to find the name of a person that if I'm friends with Tony and he gives me says, Jerry, it's okay for me to provide his email address or other contact information, I would start that way and then kind of build from there. Because, you know, when we talk about six degrees of separation, we know someone who knows someone who knows someone. Sometimes we just fail to ask them. Jerry, can I answer that? Yeah, go ahead, Dale. Yeah. Um, what you have to do, because we can't give you everybody's name, but you look at who your community paper is, your neighborhood community paper, and they will usually put you on a list for events, because they might have a section on just events. And uh, with one of, one of my clubs, we, it was uh, just every week they would add it. In a special event, you, you send them the press release, so you have to find out who that person is for the press release department. So you call whoever the neighborhood, they've changed names now, so I don't know the names anymore. It used to be Countryside and uh, so who that neighborhood uh, the person is. Yeah. Because like I belong, because we you know, you know, listen, learn, and lead, right? So actually the Elgin Chamber of Commerce, they also have a person Elgin Chamber of Commerce with all this special events too. And that the Chamber of Commerce is a really good resource yes. for that because the talk of the town postmasters was a member of the Batavia Chamber of Commerce, right. and Batavia gave us a list of about 60 media contacts, right. phone numbers, email, and things right. like that. Yeah, because Roger used to be part of the Buffalo Grove Chamber of Commerce, too. So, okay, what other questions? Kim? Cost. So, two places I wrote down cost. One under Valerie Eventbrite, and one under Roger for... Um, MailChimp. MailChimp. Okay. Are there costs associated with using those media... Eventbrite is free. Uh, even, even to establish the account? Yes, it's free. Uh, the only time that they charge you is if you charge for your event. Okay, if I charge for my event. Then they will charge you a percentage, a percentage of your, of your uh, ticket. That's why they have fees like for conference and other special Right, so, yeah. so District 30 charges, so they end up paying for the event. Uh, most of our events are free. So there's no charge for us. Okay. And then you also use it as a promotion um, to promote your club because they have a database in their... Well, that's, that's the reason I ask because there's a lot of free advertising. So why not promote on the event right Right. Always. So instead of using you know, something else, mm -hmm. it's free. It's for every meeting. Uh, yeah. MailChimp, when you register, there is a free portion for under how many? 2,000. Under 2,000. So if you have more than 2,000 people on your mailing list, you might have to pay. Please let us know how you got those 2,000. <laughs> uh, under that, it's free and uh, pretty much unlimited because you know you're going to send one or two, three, four emails a month. Mm -hmm. And then don't oh, yeah. come and get a list of the people who signed up with their email from Eventbrite. Eventbrite, right, and yeah. that's why Eventbrite creates the mailing list because you told us you were coming, and then that gets transferred into the MailChimp, like 
what you said. So it creates a mailing list and the count of the people coming to the event. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And is there a limit as to how many blasts you can send out each month? 12,000. A month. 12,000 for MailChimp or right. what about event rate? It's your event. They, oh. You have a reminder. You can send out as much emails as you want. Okay. So there's no I'd like, I'd like to ask Roger to, 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 to clarify something too because Raj, let everybody know about how many times we actually send out blasts when we do the MailChimp blast. Well, for this particular event, I believe we sent out five uh, email blasts. So we sent out, we sent them out Monday and Friday, and then again, and then we sent out one today, mm -hmm. and it's a last-minute kind of a reminder. The event is today, so it, and I try to change them up. So try to juggle them around a little bit so that, uh, it, you know, it looks like a different email. Yeah, they'll put a different header on there, a little different, you know, catchphrase on there to attract people's attention. We've got time for one more because Kim showed me the red card. Yes, Kim. I want to make sure I heard right. Did I hear that Eventbrite goes to MailChimp automatically? We have to send it to them. Oh, okay. So it's we not it's a link. It's a link. There's a link. Oh. That we export it to. Okay. So it makes it efficient. Okay. In other words, when there's a link, right. you link efficient. it. You, yeah. you you link it yourself. Great. But you can also export just the list yourself. The people that signed up, you can get that list and export it if you keep it in your own, in database. Your own database. Okay. That's all the time we ra we have right now for two. If you have additional Thank questions, you. please see any one of us before you leave. We'll be glad to, to answer those. But right now, I'm going to turn it back over to our toaster out to Virginia because then Virginia? she's. What, about 10 minutes on the. Or about, okay, we'll get to that. Okay. Okay. Um, Virginia, can you hold that for a minute? All right. So now, Virginia, we're going to have bring her back up as our Toastmaster, and she will introduce our speaker. Okay. <laughs> we will now cease recording at this point, because at this point our speaker does not want to be recorded. Thank you, everybody, for attending the YouTube video, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please join us at Top Toastmasters.